Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Welcome to your day off. My name is Corey DeCourse. What's up with my best friend, Tony? What's up, buddy? What's going on, brother? Nothing. All that noise in the background. We are live at Salt Lake City Beauty and Barber Expo, uh, hosted by our dear, dear friend, the smile that lights up the world, Mr. Tyler Calvert. Oh, dude. He is a uh, smile. It's funny. We've talked about it quite a bit. It's very infectious, right? When he smiles, you just like, oh, he's such a nice guy. Yeah. Don't even know him, but that smile just sucks you in. Yeah, and he is a nice guy. Oh, extremely a nice guy. So I was telling, um, I was telling our guest today that like when we interviewed Tyler, asked him for a headshot, and he gave me all these like mad dog headshots, like Rrr, you know. And I had to reach back, reach back out to him, and go, and, dude, stop being like a barber. Just send me that smile, man. So uh, I had to force the <laughs> smile of headshot from him, um, but he sent it over in like a. If, uh, if uh, uh, he was on, I guess, a year and a half ago or so, so go back or look at Tyler Kelbert or what I love about Spotify is if you pull our podcast up on Spotify, you can actually search it, you know, um, within our podcast. You can put in Tyler Kelbert and you know, he's just a magical, magical man. Oh, my God. He truly is. And, you know, here we are, we're, you know, we came to his event that he's putting on and he is so grateful. It's just like. You know, so thankful and just, but you could feel the sincerity of, of you know, what he says. I mean, it, he's just that kind of person. He's just a genuine dude, you know, 100%. And, he's throwing, 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 throwing. and he goes around and he supports everybody else. He showed up to Presley Poe and Friends, you know what I mean? And he supported our event and he's just, he's that kind of guy. Yeah, absolutely. And just, just, a, just such a gift for the industry. Yeah. You know, awesome. So today, another gift. we get another gift to the industry yeah. um, and, and, and someone who, I, I proudly call a friend, someone that, uh, you know, we, we chat all the time just as friends, not even as, like, hairdressers, 100%. but uh, just as friends. And, and, and someone speaking of Presley Poe and Friends, two years ago, she was one of the featured artists at Presley Poe and Friends. And, um, you know, it, it was, it, it, I'm excited about today. It's special. You know, special, right? every, t- every time we get to see her uh, at, at an event or at our event or whatever, it's just, you know, it's like old friends catching up. Well, normally when we see her, we just see her butt fly by because she's you know, like running like <laughs> stage to stage or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, we'll, we'll catch her right before she jumps <laughs> off in that two seconds, you know. Well, you know, what, hug. you know what, on that, and this is the truth, and she may not remember, but I remember, is that we were in New York, we were at the New York Hair Show, we had never met in person, and she's on stage, presenting on stage, we walked by, she jumped off the stage and came and gave us a hug and said nice to meet you and i was like don't you have a job to do you know but it was but but from that moment it was like it was very touching and i and i appreciate that that was very 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 cool the first time i met her was at uh btc in dc that's when you remember i didn't make new york no yeah. you were there it was the same time the we, it wasn't barbacon it was we, it was it was at uh oh, IBS. yeah yeah was at, we had just gotten and i don't know I don't remember if it was Curtis that introduced us, or if it was, or if it was Gabriel that introduced us. It, it was one of the two. I can't remember, but it was one of. It the was Gabe. Shows. It was Gabe. Gabe. Yeah, it was Gabe. That lovely voice that you hear—that's our dear friend Patty Plymeyer. Um, also, better, but is it better known? Well, certainly in the world, AKA. it's better known, <laughs> aka also known as Queen of the South Five Twelve. Um, that's uh, Miss Patty, and um, if you don't follow Patty, absolutely follow her. She is. Without a doubt, the best braider in the industry, and uh, and she's amazing. That's why she did Pressy Poe and Friends. Yeah, I, I remember uh, the the situation I'm talking about in uh, D.C. The BTC uh, was in the hallway, and uh, I don't. Were you presenting? I don't think I was presenting. I think I had been nominated. Yeah, maybe you were nominated. I can't remember what was happening. Yeah, I think but that was the first time that we really were able to like kind of hold conversation. Yes, you know? yes for 
English. So. That's why it stuck out so much in my mind. That's it. So that lovely voice that you hear is Miss Patty. Patty, welcome to your day off. Welcome back to your day off. I appreciate y'all. I'm happy to be here again with y'all. It's always a vibe, always good energy. I love seeing y'all. I mean, y'all know that. So it's it's a, it's almost weird that we're doing a podcast because we're such good friends and we talk all the time. No, totally. Like it's, it's weird, like just to open a mic. Yeah. You know. I'm like, oh, okay. Here, guys. <laughs> yeah, so, so we're just basically recording <laughs> our conversation. Yeah. yeah. No, seriously. But really? those are the best ones, I feel like, you know? It's just the conversations in between friends. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So what you been up to, man? Oh, man. I've been doing a lot of things. Uh, it's been a busy year. Um, I can tell you what I've recently been doing because I'd be lying if I said my mind doesn't kind of go blank with all, <laughs> with all that stuff right that yeah, have yeah. already happened this year. Um, I just got done doing um, my first Aveda Congress uh, with uh, Tatum Neal, which was... Oh, you did, uh, what's it called? Element? Uh, no, so it, he normally does Elevate, but Elevate, Elevate did uh, like a portion of the show for Aveda Congress. So it's like this huge Aveda show and it's all Aveda salons and uh, like Aveda affiliates and it was just it was incredible it was just so much inspiration um, just passion behind everything it, it was wild I mean it was it was really cool it was definitely something that I'm really grateful to have been able to experience and be a part of and the fact that he asked me was just it was huge it was where really was it cool. held um, Minneapolis in Minneapolis uh-huh. Um, I also just did the uh, Las Vegas Barber Expo. I did, I'm here judging. What else have I? Are you doing Lee's uh, retreat? I'm not doing his retreat. We did do a barber con, but his retreat should be amazing. I'm really excited to hear about how that goes because I think it's going to be a definite um, shift of what we're used to seeing and experiencing, especially in barbering. Um, but I think it's really needed, uh, especially when it comes to like mental health, physical health, emotional health. You know, we talked about this a little bit before we got on the podcast. And um, I think that it's just really important to stay grounded in those things. And sometimes I feel like we forget that we're so go, 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 go. You know, this event, that event, the barbershop, the shop, whatever it is that you have going on. And then you go home to family or your friends or your significant other or whatever it is that your responsibilities are. And I know me personally, I forget sometimes how important my own mental, physical and emotional health really are. Because, again, if you're just going, 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 you almost don't notice that you're empty Mm. until you're empty and you can't go anymore and then you're like how'd I get here and it's because you're not doing the like due diligence for yourself of keeping up with those three things so I think that retreat is going to be really positive I think it's going to kind of shake people back a little bit is it is it set up like BarberCon and then you go through those elements those three things or is it set up how is it set up from so from what I understand it's going to be an actual more like of a retreat like there's more things in nature there's more things to um, pretty much teach people how to take care of themselves especially as service industry individuals we're on our feet all day we use our hands all day Um, again kind of the mental aspect of that what does that look like Um, things like that but of course there's going to be hair involved also but again directed to well-being also what are you like for the last few years, there's been a few retreats around for hair, for the salon side or for the cause side. Like, like how important is it for the barber side? I mean, I think it's super important. And again, this is just my opinion and my it's interpretation. Um, but I think in barbering, so barbering was a male-dominated thing for so long, right? And still, there's so many men that are in barbering. Now, me being a Latina, we were raised very much, and even my my pops, who's not, you know, we were raised very uh, lacking in emotions, very lacking in the idea that mental health was a real thing. You know, it was like, get it together. Like, you don't have anything wrong with you. There's not depression. What is depression? Like, you need a man up, get it together, and you keep it pushing. And that's how it was with me growing up, and I know it was like that for a lot of people growing up, especially 
for males. You know, I see how my brother was raised and, and, you know, nothing against my parents. They're amazing people and they raised us the way that they thought we should be raised to be successful in life, right? Uh, but just seeing that on a personal level and then also seeing it on an outward level, I think that it's very important to reaffirm that emotions are okay. We all go through moments of weakness. We all go through moments that we might not feel great about ourselves, you know, self-doubt, whatever. We also need to take care of our physical health. I think that's another thing. Me personally, I never thought about upkeeping my hands, my wrists, my arms. I have carpal tunnel now. You know, all these things that had I been more aware and maybe more open could have possibly turned out differently. But I wasn't aware and I definitely wasn't open. So I think bringing something to the industry that is so kind of transparent but there to provide something so positive is huge. And I think it was lacking um, really tremendously, you know. Um, and yeah, I hope that it kind of helps bridge that gap of what we think is normal, quote unquote, and like the things that we're supposed to like eat. Right. And the things that, like, you know, we should give ourselves a little grace on. And if we're not pouring into our own cup first, how are we going to pour into all of our clients' cups? Because that's what we do. We don't just do hair. In essence, we're like therapists, you know. And that goes, I feel like, for men and women. And I say that on my experience of having both clients. Uh, most of my clients now are males. But, I mean, the things that I hear from people sitting in my chair, you know. So, yeah, I think I think that's important. I'm really interested. You know, a big shout out to uh, Lee Resnick and the and, and the Lee. barber thing. I, I love Lee too, and um, I just I, I think it's like I, I don't want to sound disrespectful because I'm not trying to be disrespectful. But even if it's a big failure, I I applaud the effort. Right, I applaud the effort to say like this is a space that we need to create, and and so maybe it's it never will be like a failure. I put in quotes as well, but 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 I just think it's very responsible. I think Lee always comes from a place of love and light. And if I were to say that to him, he'd probably, like, roll his eyes at me. Oh, he definitely like, All right, Patty, whatever. But, like, <laughs> my interpretation of who he is as an individual and what he represents in our community, I think that he really does everything from a place of love and light. He does it from a place of wanting to see people succeed, achieve their goals, and also carrying on what we do in this industry and just making it better as time progresses. I, I I agree. I mean, we we've spent some dinners with him, and we've spent you know some nights out with him, and he's just like a just a decent decent human being, you know, and like I definitely look, agree. He's, you you got to cut through that New York hardness a little bit, yeah, but, that's but the once best you get part, there, though, because he's real, you know what I mean? He's real, and you never have to worry about Lee not being real with you. He's gonna tell you exactly what it is, and. And there's no sugar coating and, and really I don't only respect that but I really love that because nowadays we live in a time that people walk on eggshells around you they sugar coat everything and it's like no just give it to me how it is you know give me give a, it to me hot for real because how else do you hold yourself accountable if people aren't honest and transparent with you about things like you don't so I don't know I think the Lee Resnicks of the world are very yeah, important my hat's off to him because I mean you know we grew up in an era where, you know, as, as a guy, if you show emotion, you're weak. Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? So you, so you grow up your whole life trying to, uh, you know, bury that, you know. And, and it's generational trauma. Yeah. You know, because we're taught something and then we continue it on and we don't see anything wrong with it because it's what we saw our family do. It's what we saw our friends do. And... It just continues on. It's almost like generational trauma, yeah. you know. And so, yeah, I think. So trying to break into that positive. space in in in, a, in that world, I mean, that's I mean, it takes guts, like you said, because there's a big chance for it not to succeed because a lot of people will try to not allow themselves to go there. It's still slightly taboo. I feel like you yeah. know, it's still something that it's like maybe not fully understood or fully um, accepted because it's not fully understood. And again, I think it goes back to how a lot of us were raised, um, how we perceive the world and how we perceive who we're supposed to be in the world, especially with social media. You know, I think social media really gives um, the ability of like building this like really fake persona and really fake life at times, not in a bad way, but like, you know, for example, you open my Instagram, right? 
and you're gonna see magic. All <laughs> all, in all pretty positive things, right? Like, I mean, I, it's you know, hair and you know, accolades of hair and, and achievements, and here and there there might be a couple personal things, but you know, I don't think any of us. Well, let me say not any of us, but I think most of us don't think like, oh, you know, um, I went through this really tragic loss or, oh, this thing in my personal life and, oh, I have to post about that. I have to tell them about this failure. Most people don't do that. So when we open social media and we look at all of these accounts and all of these pages, and again, I say it for myself because I know that so many people have told me like, oh, and you just, you know, like my whole life's together. My whole life's not together, but I'm not posting that on social media. But you know what though? I mean... I have a love-hate relationship with this as oh, well. I do too. You know, but I, I wouldn't follow you if it was all negative. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Or I wouldn't follow you like, or like, or like. You said love and light. I love and light that side of Patty. Yeah. And like, and like, and, and, and as a friend of yours, and I'm only speaking as a friend of yours, if I were to see that you were hurting, it would be something that like, I'd probably reach out to you privately and yeah. go, hey, I see this, but I don't want to see that all the time because when you hurt, I hurt. And then at some point, I'm just like going to be like, I can't follow Patty anymore because it just brings me down. But at what point do we also recognize that statement you just said? And how do we make that a little better for the people who are influencing, who do go through things and feel like they can't speak about it or post about it because we have a responsibility to the people that follow us to give this type of energy to be uplifting to be positive to to be the love and light mm -hmm. you know and and again i think that that's so important and that's what i strive to do but i i also think that it's important that we have conversations that look it's not always love and light you know, it's not always these really positive things. Sometimes life really does get hard and sometimes it sucks and it gets better. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's it's a lot of responsibility. And and I think it's important to be able to see that, like, we're all just humans having a human experience, trying to do the best we can. And um, yeah, so that's the kind of love-hate relationship I have with social media. But I'm also very grateful for social media because without it, I mean, I don't know where I would be. To me, like social media will end up like TV in the sense of if that's all you saw, you, bec you become desensitized to oh, it. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? It's sort of like the violence or, or anything else that you see on TV from from back in the 70s, 80s, night till now. It's just you're so desensitized desensitize it's no you know oh another kill okay no big deal you know what i mean you doesn't bother you at all and i think if, if if that's was the focus then you know it'd just be the sense oh it's just going through some trouble okay oh well you know what i mean and, and you move on so but things like what lee's doing or these other things uh to to give people space to heal or to to yes. allow to go through that um you know, I think it, it, it's a safe, safe space, right? And we're but, all just but, on a healing journey. That's right? it. We're all yeah. on our journey. So. Right? But but I also but I also think that like, and I'll put this on you. You do with it what you will. But but you know, you also have a responsibility because your story, your backstory, isn't doesn't paint success. No. And you've ha and you've had success through that. Yes. So so you know, I your highlight reel is awesome because you you can sit back and go like. Oh, Patty kind of did this, you know. And not only did you do this, but like you said earlier, I mean, every weekend you're at a different event. You're you're being recognized for your God's gift, and you're also being recognized because you're just a darling person to be in the room with. And I, but I think that that's important. You know, I think that's really important because there's certainly people that, I mean, we even with our events, there's definitely people that we refuse to work with. Oh, I. You know I've, what I'm saying? I've definitely met people that I'm like, oh, you're not who I thought. Were, right so. <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. you know so so you know i think but i think that your life that's being rewarded for all the things that you do positive can also you have a responsibility to also say hey these are my successes and it doesn't say that it's not without the failures or it's not without the rough days or it's not without that but but there's a responsibility to say like if patty can make it you yes. know, anybody can cut, not anybody, and but you know. No, but, but I mean, literally, movement. no, I, I truly feel like anybody can. And, and that's why, again, going back to kind of what Lee is doing and why I think like mental and emotional and physical health are so important. I definitely feel like I have that responsibility. And that's why I take those three things very seriously also, because if I'm not taking care of myself, 
how can I then put out for everybody else? And I want everybody to see that it's a it's an achievable thing because mm -hmm. I never thought I was going to be anybody at like with anything doing anything like at all you know and I mean hell I didn't think I was going to be the age I am you know there's so many things that I you know I didn't have goals there was no dreams it was like a day-to-day -day life and so with that being said I feel like it is very much my responsibility in the healing journey of myself to continue pushing that forward so I can keep putting the love and light face out to everybody to show that look yeah we all go through shit and sometimes it gets hard but we can be resilient and move past it and continue to grow and like I was saying earlier I think that duality is such an important thing to be able to like embrace and understand and understanding that just because something might be perceived as negative now doesn't mean that it can't turn into a positive once you've moved through it, you know, or you've healed or addressed certain things that needed to be addressed to then turn it into more of a positive shift. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's just like every day, just getting up and you keep going. You put one foot in front of the other. I, I get told all the time, you know, how much people admire me because I'm strong, right? Strong, strong. It's always the word strong, strength. And, and I'm grateful for that. But if we're going to be realistic and just very transparent, I'm not a strong person. I'm actually a really weak person a lot of the times. I'm very emotional. I'm a lot of things. But what I am that I do very well is I'm resilient. And I think that resilience is so much better of a word than being strong. Um, because strength comes through being resilient. It doesn't start off being strong. You know, It just starts off knowing that you can't just sit there. So you got to keep pushing forward and then it turns into strength. So I think that that's something really important too that we have to find in ourselves is like that ability to just keep pushing forward and knowing that just because it might suck in this moment doesn't mean that the moments coming up are going to suck also. You just have to keep pushing, you know. Um, my latest mantra, because I live by mantras, and I think I learned this from Tom Hanks, by the way. I think there was a video that I saw, but, but, it, but it touched me and it was like, oh, that makes sense to me now. Right, but and, and it's four simple words. It might be more than four. Nobody count. But this too shall pass. Yes. Right. And 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 you know, I love. We did a podcast earlier, and and the person was talking about how they want to stay medium. They don't want to say hi. They don't want to say low. They want to say medium. And this too shall pass. Kind of sounds like medium. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. You feel awesome, but understand that there's going to be a leveling here. Yeah. You and, know. And that's just life. You know. But I feel like that's the beauty of life. Not everything's going to be a positive. Not everything's going to be a negative. Again, it goes back to the duality of things, you know, and just understanding that, like, negative and positive coexist together. And it's what we feed, that's what grows, you know. And like you said, this too shall pass. Everything ends, you know, everything. Everything. See, Nothing what, is forever. Listening to you two talk about this subject, right, I'm looking at a line, okay, and how you explained it things are oh, that one's it. okay so you got you know it was on this side uh, earlier <laughs> so <laughs> i don't know what term to use um you know try to stay in the, that middle line you know th you got ups and you get downs it depends on how you handle it a lot of times we let our emotion handle it and we'll go way down here and then when we're up high we go way up here and it's kind of like that that chart uh, like we talked about earlier, uh, it looks like a heart attack, right? La, yeah. Uh, on an EKG. So if you can stay, try to tr stay centered during the highs and lows, you're going to be more consistent. So something I feel like I say so much, and some people appreciate it, gets on other people's nerves, but it is what it is, and it's not what it's not. And it's just that simple sometimes. And I'm a very emotional person, so I tell myself this a lot because... You can't be emotional in every situation, you know. You can't let emotion run everything because it will. And sometimes you just have to see things for the facts, you know. And it is what it is, yeah. you know. And then you hit it with the this too shall pass. I and will then you keep it pushing. I, <laughs> say, I will say for this too shall pass, when you're feeling really good, you don't want to have that conversation. No. No, you, you no, want to be like, let's keep going. But when it's low, right, you can be like, 
this too shall pass. But again, that's when you got to remember the duality of things, and, right. and they can't exist if they're not coexisting. You right. know, so let's get deep. Yeah. <laughs> like, look, y'all caught me on a day off, man. Right. I don't know what to tell y'all. <laughs> I thought y'all were going to get braids today. Right. No. <laughs> oh, we're getting braided. Right. <laughs> um, but, yeah, all in all, I think. Braiding just, the heartstrings. Hey, you know? and you just got to remember, man, life's a blessing. And every day that we wake up is a blessing. You know, I lost my best friend. Oh, man, it's going on eight years now. Wow. Um, and if I learned anything from that, it's that, you know, every day that we wake up, it's a blessing. And we have to do what we can with that day because we don't know if we're going to get the next day or even the ending of this day, you know? It's the present that's a gift. And just staying grounded in that. And it's the moments and the experiences and the hugs or the handshakes or the conversations. That's what life is. It's just a bunch of little moments, a bunch of little memories, you know, in my opinion. Yeah, and the more you collect those, the just the the more I don't know. It just makes you happy. You know it what I mean? It fills you. Yeah, it fills you. You know, it fills you with love and light. That's really what it is. You know, you surround yourself with positive people, loving people. You know, situations and environments that really bring out the best in you. Yeah. And that's what you get. I feel like. What are you grateful for? Uh. Do I give a list or just like something in specific? What's on your heart? I'm grateful for life. I'm grateful for um, growth. I'm grateful for love. Uh, Yeah. Giving or receiving love? Both. Both. Even if you're giving love and it's not being reciprocated in the way that you're giving it, the ability to give love and the ability to know the feeling of being able to give a pure love, I think, is one of the blessings of life. Because how sad is it to imagine the people that go through life not being able to love anyone, you know? And how sad is it to think that you've gone through life without being loved? And I think sometimes also we get caught up in this idea that like love is forever, right? Self-love can be forever, you know? Um, love for maybe family members, I think, can be forever. But, you know, sometimes love, they're just moments. But being able to be grateful for those experiences. You know, I'm super grateful that I've had the opportunity to be in love. Am I in love anymore? No. Do I talk to that person anymore? No. But I'm so grateful that I had that opportunity because I know that there's some people that will never experience the love that I experienced. And that makes me sad for them. I'd much rather have had a taste of it and know what it was like and then have moved on from it than to have never experienced it at all. Isn't there a quote about that? I'm it's sure better there to is. love. I don't know. I'll mess, I, I'll mess it up. It's better I, I, to love I, and lose. Yeah, or something, is, something yeah. like that. But I feel the same way with you know having given love too. You know, the ability to give love I think is such a like a pure and genuine thing. And there's definitely been people that I've given so much love to, and it wasn't reciprocated. But I think you also got to remember that you know. You can't make people be any type of way. You have to let people show you who they are. And you give them grace and you accept that. Because the moment we try to change how people are, that's when we end up being hurt or, you know, disillusioned with, you know, the person or the situation. Like, you let people show you who they are the first time. And you respect it and you move with it. All right, I found it. What is it? Better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. I totally agree with that. Totally, totally agree with that. Yeah, and it's true. I mean, I, it's deep. It's a deep thing, and I think that not everybody can fully like wrap their minds around that idea, right? But you know, life's not a movie. Yeah. You know, it's not. We're not in a rom com. <laughs> it's not. You know what I mean? Like, life is life. So. Again, yeah. it's the moments I feel like that are important. Mm, I like that. Yeah, I, to me, uh, and Corey can uh, probably vouch for this: is that like my family is 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 not normal when it comes to to love. I mean, we like 
like I'll have a barbecue in my in my house, and there'll be 60, 70 people in my backyard. That's so cool. You know what I mean? We grew I mean, it. My family it's grew up so like cousins, and we all lived in the same area. Uh, and it, it, we have adopted people that are family that are not even blood family, and uh, it just keeps growing. And in this family circle, it's just that kind of family love. I mean, and when we got you back, we got you back. Well, and love is the highest vibrating frequency. You know, and it's like, I feel like I've said this so many times over so many years, but like, if you do something through love, how do you expect it to not be beautiful? And I have to remind myself that sometimes, because don't get me wrong, I have moments that I'm like, why am I such a loving person? Why do I give so much and receive so little in return sometimes? Why do I continue to be that person knowing that I'm probably not going to get that back the way I give it? And I have moments that I'm like, man, like, I just, I wish I wasn't like that. But at the end of the day, I'm so grateful that I'm like that. I'm so grateful because I'd much rather be like this than be, like, cold-hearted and just rough and, like, I'd much rather come from a genuine place of love. And if you reciprocate it, cool. And if you don't, that's cool, too. We don't all vibrate on the same frequency. Right, yeah. And I had a good friend named Katie May uh, once who told me, you know, that, you know, what you give out, you don't necessarily have to expect it out of other people. You're doing it out of your own heart. Exactly. You know what I mean? And even if you don't get it, I feel like, and again, this is something that I got to remind myself of and stay present and grounded in. Even if you don't get it back from other people, I feel like the universe will still give it back to you. Oh, it might just good. not come from other people, but it's going to come. That feeling, that fullness, that love will come. You just can't expect it to come out of somebody's mouth. Yeah. You know, you can, it's, I think sometimes we, we look or we pray for these things, right? But then we're not open to it being given back to us in a way that we didn't expect. You know, it's like, oh, I want to be loved unconditionally. So you're looking for this partner to come and sweep you off your feet, and love you unconditionally. But maybe you're in an industry that loves you unconditionally. And, you know, it's, I think we just have to be aware of, you know, things can show up in different packages. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not always going to be the way that we perceive it to be or that we want it to be. It'll come. But are we going to be open enough to recognize how it's coming? Right. That's and good. then it goes back to the gratitude portion, you know, and being, I think, grounded and gratitude is really important also because you have to be aware of like all the blessings you know because if not you fall back into that dark place and it's a lower vibration so what you're calling to you is lower and it's darker and it, and it lives on that vibration so in my experience if you stay grounded in gratitude it's a higher vibration and it brings that back full circle to you it brings those people it brings those events those situations or even just being in a place that that energy feels so present like this show it's so much good energy at this show yeah you know what's interesting in that you brought the show up because and i think it kind of you know is what you're saying too is like this show is because of Tyler. Oh, totally. And, and this is no disrespect to Michael. I don't know Michael at all, to be honest. He's super cool, but Tyler is... But, but Tyler, and, and whenever you talk to anybody, any of our friends that are here, they're all like, we're here to support Tyler. Yeah. And there's, 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 a, there's a couple brands that I've spoken to that's like, we've been here all three years in support of Tyler. You know? That's and why I'm here. It, it, that's why we're here. That's exactly why I'm here. You know, and I think that that, like you said, is a perfect example of that high vibrational energy that he puts into this as well as Mike, but again, speaking on Tyler, and then it you feel it. You feel it in the show. You, you feel it with the people's energy that come to the show. You know, it's a higher vibration. So again, I think that goes back to what you put out does come back. It might not come back in the way you're expecting it to, but it will come back at some point. Yeah, it's like words verberate forever, right? So you're putting out neg negativity you're putting it out and that's going to last forever right so i agree with you 100 percent on what type of vibration you're putting out and it's like being conscious because again it sounds easy right but like like i told you this past month and a half has been a difficult month and a half for me and i can't tell you how many moments i've had of having to really reground myself and be present and change that self-talk and being like no 
That's not what it is. We're not going to feed that. We're not going to keep thinking that. we got to move that thought out. Because, again, the voice we hear in our head is the voice we're going to hear more than any other voice our whole lives. You know, And so if we're not going out of our way to consciously make sure that that voice is telling us something positive, like what a disservice we're doing to ourselves. You know? Yeah. I read a book called The Untethered Soul. Have you read that? No, but I've heard about it's it. It's such a patty book. Is it? Oh, my God, yeah. Okay. It's such a patty okay. book. Okay. I'm going to get it on, uh, on, what on is Audible. It? On, yeah, on so Audible. I can listen to it on the it, play. It's heavy, though, man. It's like, it's like you need, I need to do it in segments. Like I can't listen to it like a book. You know, I have to kind of do it in segments. But one of my takeaways from that is that you're not your thoughts, right? You're yeah. deeper than your thoughts. So, you know, all those thoughts that come in, you can also move them on. Now, it's a real discipline to be like, oh, let me identify what's going on here oh, and now hard. move the thought through, you know. But, 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 but once you've realized that it's just a thought, then you have a place to let it go. And we have that responsibility to ourselves, I feel like, you know. And so many of us never realize it. Until it's almost like too late, I feel like. You know, I see a lot of my family members that are older and they've kind of stayed so grounded in their trauma, you know, and it's just, we have to be as individuals responsible for our own individual growth. And it's hard and it's ugly and it's messy and it's painful and it's all those things, uncomfortable, awkward, but at the end of the day, if we don't do it for ourselves, nobody's going to do it for us. And the years just pass by. I think that, I think that, that Fast what we, yeah, exactly. And, you know, certainly what we've observed or what I've observed is that when your identity becomes that trauma and then you double down with it and then when the years go by and by and by and by and now like we talked about this with the family like yesterday is like now your identity is this victimhood yeah. and it's so hard and again what is change change isn't what you're leaving change is like getting or not what you're going to but like is a uh, is leaving your belief system you know and it's really really hard to, to leave the belief system of being a victim totally because also i feel like as humans our belief system we use that to identify who we are like our beliefs we directly like correlate with who we are as people so that's why i know i can only speak for myself again and things that I've been through, but I know that when I was coming out of like victim feelings and like really going through like a lot of the growth that I did when I got sober, um, it it was hard because I felt like people were challenging like you know therapy things like that. I felt like they were challenging who I was as a as a person because they were challenging my beliefs, and I had to separate the two and realize, like you said, like my beliefs. That's what I was taught. That's what I grew up with. That's not who I am. Mm. at all mm. it's just what I learned but you can learn new things too if you choose so I don't know I think you, growth is cool you know what's interesting is that um, and this took this took a long time and, and I'm again 95% wrong in this but literally like when my body reacts in a way I realize that that's a belief system that I'm reacting against you know but you know, I would a lot of times go with that feeling. I still do. You know what I mean? But then, like, when I get that feeling now, I can kind of take that pause and go, like, oh, this is a belief system that I'm fighting for. And that doesn't mean it's true. Mm-hmm. It's just this belief system that I'm feeling that, that, that I'm fighting so are for. So you, are you trying to be aware of... of be, my question is to both of you guys, Nick, is how do you recognize it, and then how do you start changing it? For me, and, and I'll back up a little bit. Maybe this, will, maybe this is it, but... Like, and I've told this story a hundred times on the podcast, so I hope there's still value there. But like, but when I was 30, I'm 54 now, so 20 years ago, I made the decision not to fight with my wife anymore, right? Because we, we had started dating when we were 17, and the way that we were fighting wasn't productive. I didn't, I didn't date a 25-year-old Patty who said, you're not going to talk to me that way. You're not going to treat me this way. And, and, and same with her, right? Yeah. So we were, so until we were in our mid-30s, we fought as if we were teenagers, right? And we never kind of like evolved into what was next so anyways i made the decision that i wasn't going to fight with her anymore right but when whenever like whenever i was triggered and i started getting those feelings i had to reassess or reassign those feelings and say what it used to mean was like i use you as an example patty you got me here now you're gonna pay for it 
right? So once those feelings came up and they shot up in me, I had to re, I go, okay, I have, I have a half a second to make a decision here. And now my decision, or then my decision was, I needed to leave the situation because I don't, I don't trust who I am with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I kind of move. So with that, I've had to identify that like, and it happens with you all the time because we talk about stuff, you know? And I get this feeling of like, of where I want to be defensive. Well, defensive, all I'm defending is a belief system. I'm not defending the truth. I'm not defending what is. I'm defending my own belief system. You know, and this is just like, if you think about it like with any kind of sense, it's, it's a ridiculous argument. You know, and, and by the way, my belief system doesn't care about me at all. I yeah. only care about the belief system. Exactly. You know, so when I get defensive, that's my trigger to go like, what's happening here? Right? And that, that's also my way of trying hard to stay on that middle line. Right? right? Because if, if, if I'm not, if I'm getting that defensive, now it's like I'm not on that middle line anymore. I, totally I, hope st- I hope that makes sense. That makes total sense. You know, so, but every single time, t- it has to be every single time. I'm being defensive. What am, why am I defensive? You know? Huh? Now you just argue with me. Someone's got to get it. <laughs> for me, and y'all will probably have to bleep this, so I apologize, but for me, it's kind of when the fuck it happens. Yeah. And that is the clear indicator that maybe I need to stop for a second and reevaluate. Oh, hold on. What do you mean? Um, so. What's the fuck it? The attitude. So, like, young me was like, fuck it about everything. I, about everything. Are oh, you going to talk to me crazy? Cool. Like, I got something for that because there's a lot of fuck it behind how I felt, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't. I didn't value things in the same way that I value them now. So when I... Hold on, I want to back up still. So so when you say fuck it, are you saying like, like forget I, about it, there's no, no importance no, here? No, or it's like, like I'm, I'm, was, ready, I'm, ready, ready, I'm ready to, to throw hands. I'm ready to lose everything. Because fuck it. it. That's him. Like I yeah. was just ready to... And, and it was always... <laughs> now look, hang on. I'm not like that anymore, all right? No, I'm, no, but let's I'm talk it through. I'm significantly older, but... <laughs> You're just old. We already yeah, we already like, talked already about that. Me right? <laughs> <laughs> We're already That's a new name, that. Jer. Hey, yeah. Jerry. Don't you dare. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> Y'all got to give me like two or three more years oh. before you start doing I think, me like You know that. what? I think she's in fuck it. She's, <laughs> ready, to, she's ready to throw hands. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's, it's that feeling, you so, know. That so it's not like, it's it's like. I'm ready to go all in. Yeah. It's like, I don't care what I say. I don't care who I hurt. I don't care how you interpret what I say. I don't care the faces. I don't care about any of that. I don't care about you. And that is not who I am anymore. It's actually funny because you were exactly there when you were telling that story. Yeah. Because I felt it. I know. Well, we who, felt it. Because that's who I was. Yeah. And so when I recognized that person coming back out, that's when I reevaluate everything because I'm like, that's not who we are anymore. And that's my number one goal in my own personal life and growth. I'm only in competition with the person I used to be. Mm. You know? And I just want to be better than her. I want to leave a, a more positive impact than what that person was doing. And the moment that I start feeling like I'm that person again, that's a huge red flag for me because I'm not that person anymore. And I consciously go out of my way every day to not be that person. So that's my biggest like red flag trigger, however you want to call it, is when when I start feeling just a little too yeah, just fuck it, you know. There's so many there's so many there's so much like social media out there about red flag clients, red flag this, red flag that. But nobody said, what are your red flags? No. What are you bringing to the plate? Because I feel like so often we like we push it and deflect it off of ourselves, right? And it's everybody else and it's our environment and this, that, and the third. But like, bro, let's be honest. The people that are around you are the people that your energy calls towards you. So like, take a good look at the people you have around you and what is that saying about yourself? Because I know that when I'm vibrating at a high energy level, on a very positive level, I have really positive people and positive things that find me. I don't have to find them. They find me. But when I'm in a place of, like, just not feeling good, not taking care of myself, low vibrational shit happens. So whose fault is that? I'm not going to blame you. I'm not going to blame the universe. I'm not going to blame God. It was me. I did that. And so I feel like it's important to also have accountability in like our own growth and what it is we represent and who we show up as every day. 
Mm. See, Nobody else is accountable for that. As <laughs> as not Jerry Patty, but young Patty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can't you can't you know that now. Oh yeah. But young Patty didn't know that. Oh young. Young Pat young Patty if it's like me, young Patty, it's your fault. Oh yeah. You did this. And then we was gonna fight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got now now yeah. you got something on your And hands. I would look at you every time I saw you. Yeah. yeah, that's what it was. And now I'm like, no no no. Jerry Patty's gonna take care of the pants. <laughs> <Yeah. all right? laughs> so. Yeah. I I can relate a thousand percent. Oh, that's that's And and you just think about how life felt then versus how life feels now. And I try to stay so conscious of those feelings, you know. And every time I feel a little bit of that ugly from before, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's not where I live anymore. Yep. That's not that's not where I'm at anymore. So I'm not going to claim that. I'm not going to feed that. Because if I feed that, I backtrack into that person. I, I, told my, I, t- I tell my wife all the time, I said, I'm so thankful. Like a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of fathers, a lot of guys are afraid to have girls and daughters. But I am so thankful that I had a daughter because I tell my wife all the time, she taught me how to love you unconditionally. You know what I mean? I thought I loved you unconditionally until she was born. And then, then I knew how to love unconditionally, and that's what taught me how to, like, you know. And, and pr- prior to that, I was in that mind, you know, what he was saying, you know, like when we fought, oh, you're going to pay. Yeah. You know what I mean? I ain't back, you know, oh, I got yeah. pride. You got I, my pride. I was down. Yeah, right, I was about it. All right, yeah, now I'm so, like, no, 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 no. I ain't even got the energy. For but all Jerry that. Tony is, uh, <laughs> is a completely. Corey can tell you, I'm a completely different human being. Oh sure. yeah, I'm a lover now, for not sure. a fighter. And before yeah. I was a fighter. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of jump on what Tony was saying. Like, I'm so grateful that one, I'm, I'm grateful that um, I'm a hairdresser, and like all my clients are women. You know, I'm also very grateful that I'm a hairdresser in Bethesda, Maryland, because little known fact. We've talked about it, but little known fact is that Bethesda, Maryland, where our salon is, is the most educated women in the world. There's more graduate degrees in Bethesda, Maryland than any place else per capita in the world. So not only are like my clients are ballers. Oh, I'm sure. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure. Like they're ballers. So so there's no way I'm getting someplace. I promise you. And then again, having a daughter and having a wife, what I've what I've had to do, or what I've been forced to do, is to assess my own relationship with misogyny and masculinity you know and that and that and, and even my dad's we've talked about this with we talked about this with jay but like you know it wasn't five years ago where i had to kind of assess like what is misogyny because i'm living through my father's misogyny because that was my role model not even realizing what that was most of us don't realize it. i feel like you know i think there's a lot of women myself included that we live in a time that we can't really embrace our soft feminine era, right? Because we have been competing against this toxic masculinity for so long that the idea of being soft and feminine is weak and we won't get anywhere. We won't be respected, uh, we won't be valued. And that can be really hard because I know for me, you know, mid thirties, I wanna experience my soft feminine self you know but I think it's very positive that I think a lot of men are starting to become more aware of what you just said and I think that even if maybe my generation doesn't get to transition into that smoothly the generation after us will you know I think it's important to um, be aware and to accept kind of where things have been, where they are now, and hopefully what we're building for them to go. Um, but I think that's awesome. I, I think it's great that you are aware of that, you know, and so many other people that are aware of that. But I, I definitely think that it's it's had a lot to do with how a lot of women carry themselves and move, not just throughout our industry, but throughout life in general. You know, we, we have to be tough. We have to be, you know, unless, unless, you know, you're marketing yourself on more of a, I hate to say sexual level, but you know. Sex sells. You know, and, and then it's like, yeah, that's totally cool because that's how you're representing yourself. But what about those of us that just, you know, I work in a barbershop with all men. I get hit on 24-7. You know, so it's hard to be soft and feminine when I'm constantly like, hey, fuck off. Back to fuck it. Yeah, you know, like, and so it's like, it's hard 
to to grow in that aspect sometimes because it's, it's a constant wall and guard that has to be up because the moment that I call somebody love one too many times they think I'm interested but that's back to my friend Katie uh, Katie May uh, you know it's the same with men being emotional that's the same thing yeah and so finding that I feel like that common ground and and just growing as a whole it's not growing just men or women separately. It's how do we come together and start healing trauma that we've been taught is only a feminine thing or only a masculine thing. Only women go through this. Oh, only men go through this. You're not supposed to feel this way. Oh, uh, man up. You know, I think it's it's a matter of us coming together. And for so long, we've been so separated. It's funny because I'm going to tell a story. The, the last time I was there, to uh, ready to lose everything is it was probably about eight years ago nine years ago and uh, my daughter she was at uh, she was interested in this guy she was in college um, and he was a baseball player and, uh, her and her friend went to, to he was having a party but it was like a, a his baseball team party so it was her and her friend but the only two girls there it was like like 20 guys. She's 19. She's an adult. But she's still daddy's little girl. So I call her up and I said, honey, I said, I know you're going to hate me. And she is daddy's little girl. She's she, she's my everything, right? At that, at, As my baby girl. Yeah. I said, um, you're going to have to leave. She's like, she goes, no. I'm 19 years old. I said, no. I said, look. I'm on my way, and I'm gonna give you two choices when I when I get there. I'm gonna give you five minutes to come out, or Dad's coming in. I said, but you're gonna you're gonna have to you're gonna make that decision, and I love you. And I texted her. I said, look, I'm out front. In about four minutes and thirty seconds, she came out. <laughs> She's like, yeah, you ain't gonna do me like that, Dad. Cause she knew. That I'm coming in, and I, I would, you know, even if it, if I had to lay hands on every man in there or get put to sleep myself, that was going to happen. And she knew that was going to happen. Yeah. And so she came out. And so did her friend. She's so. like, I'm coming too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you know, at the end of the day, it's all about just us being good to one another. You know. It all just goes back to us treating one another, and it might sound corny, cliche, whatever, but treating one another the way we want to be treated. You know, because you you have no idea what people are going through. It doesn't matter the gender, the religion, the nationality, whatever. You have no idea what people are going through. And sometimes that smile, sometimes that, you know, the hey, or, you know, that small gesture of noticing someone or just being kind to someone you don't know what that does to them you know and then hopefully it kind of does the domino effect and they continue to perpetuate the same thing and it continues on you know and i think if we did that more often we'd probably be in a better when place we started this on. podcast Corey says something once that's always stuck in the back of my mind and, it, and it's the open up the door story you want to tell that yeah i'm just uh, and it's i mean i've never thought of it like that and it's, it always irked me until the first time he told this story. So, uh, again, it's just a practice that I try and I fail a lot, you know, a, as we do in life. But um, I feel that it's, it's my duty, like, if I hold the door open for somebody and they don't say thank you. If I ever get that feeling like, you suck or anything like that, I just have to remind myself that, that I'm doing it just to be, just to pass on to, the, to society. You know, and it was never, ever, ever about the thank you. It was just about being a better person. And, and it's the same thing, like, if someone cuts you off in traffic and stuff, like, that stuff doesn't bother me at all. Like, literally doesn't bother You're me at all. You're better than me because I'm still working on that. <laughs> but it is. It's the practice, right? It, it's, yeah. it, it, it's, it's, it's. And then I got to remind this, myself, I'm like, what am I even mad about? Like, this is they're it. probably having such a shit day. Like. I can't take that on. That's not mine. But it could on. even be a, an accident. So now, like, 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 not an accident like they hit you, but an accident like that. Like, cause, I mean, how many times have we like oh, crossed yeah. lanes and like? I'm like, look, oh. you're better than me because that never comes to my mind. I'm like, oh, 
this person. <laughs> no. This, this person is playing bumper cars with me. No. <laughs> well, you do live in Austin. Maybe I, that's yeah. a young like, Patty. It's, it's young, Texas. Young Patty. Young Patty. <laughs> yeah, like, that's why my barber shop that I work at is so close to the crib, right? So I don't even have to drive like that because that is my one place that I feel like I have a little bit of like, I got to be like, hey. Let's breathe a couple times. Not that serious. Plus, you know, Texas is an open carry state, so you're not trying to really get mad oh, at yeah. anybody on the road. Right. So, yeah, but no, I agree with you on that. And you put the positive energy out almost to the collective. It's not like one person in particular, you know. That happens to me all the time. I'll hold the door or I'll, you know, something or somebody sneezes or say bless you or whatever. And people look at you like you're psycho. And it's like, all right, cool. But I'm not going to change who I am because I wasn't reciprocated the way I wanted to be reciprocated. I'm going to stay solid in the person that I am. And, you know, again, hopefully that will positively influence somebody somewhere at some point. And I think as long as we're able to positively influence one person in our lives, we've done something pretty great. Well, you definitely had an impact on us. So. Well, but, oh, but, 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 but think about, like, sorry to back up a little bit, but, like, think about even the door opening, right? Mm-hmm. Like, if I open the door for you and you don't say thank you, literally two seconds later, you didn't even realize what just happened, but now I'm going to own that energy that you're not even feeling about me. Yeah. Right? And yeah. how long am I going to own that energy for? Well, so much of it is the overthinking. Oh, like, yeah. I, I'm an overthinker, like a notorious overthinker. That's why I spend so much time talking to myself, you know, and Patty being like, man. hey, like, you're tripping. Uh-huh. Get it together. <laughs> like, I, you're bugging a little bit. I'm like, you made that bigger than what you needed to make that. But I think, you know, all of us do that to some extent. And again, it's just being able to call yourself out on it. Hold yourself accountable, you know, like, hey, maybe I was a little, a little mean today. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I can do better tomorrow. So you do better tomorrow. That's kind of my concern with like we were talking about a little bit earlier about like victim mentality and stuff. It, it's my concern that you're not doing the self-talk. It's my concern that everybody in the room's at fault except yourself without having that conversation. But again, unfortunately, I feel like that's something that you have to internally find. You can't gift that to anybody. For sure. That was one of the things that I think was the most frustrating for me in the beginning parts of like my, my growth and like, like yeah, just growth. I wanted to like gift this feeling to everybody. I wanted to open everybody's eyes. I'm like, y'all don't get it. Like, this is beautiful. This is amazing. Like, here, y'all have to take this. And like, I don't want it. I'm like, what do you mean you don't want it? You don't even know what you're missing out on. Like, you do want it. And they're like, no, I don't want it. And I'm like, what the fuck do you mean you don't want it? Yes, you do. <laughs> and it's like being able to understand and recognize that it's we only can be responsible for ourselves. I think I'm going to bring this entire conversation full circle here is that when you're at fuck it, when you're at fuck it, when I'm at like playing victim, you know, which I did for a long time in my life, when people are playing at victim, that's what served them. And until they're until they get to the point to where this no longer serves me, you ne- you can't you can't grow past that. You have to grow past that by saying this is no longer serving to me. At some point but, you get tired. You get tired, and, and 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 even with the victim stuff, at some point you have to say, victimhood has never served anybody. But but until you get to that point to be like, this is no longer serving me. That's the big change in life. This does not serve me, even though it's my identity. And I think also remembering that a good way that I'm aware that I'm still like present and grounded in my own growth is that I'm almost constantly, in some way, shape, or form, uncomfortable. Mm. Always. So whether it be with uh, something that I thought or uh, something that I do or maybe a relationship I have with somebody, like growth is not stagnant. Growth is uncomfortable. It's constant movement. So and like me being a tourist, (laughs) I am big on like, oh, I'm comfortable here. I don't think I want to leave. This is great. But like, is it really great or are you stuck? And that's what I'm constantly trying to remind myself, too, when I'm like, man, like, today really wasn't a good day, or I felt like this, or man, I haven't thought about that in forever. What's going on? It's not always a negative. Growth is uncomfortable. It's just, it is what it is, you know? On that note, this too shall pass. Always. Always. Well, you are my queen, queen of the South. I love y'all. Very, very much. I appreciate y'all having me.
Let's see the heart. Let's see it. You got this. Yeah, Come that's on. close. Come it's cool. It's like cool. it's there, kind of. Yes, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> Patty Plymire. Most importantly, thank you for always being the light. Thank you for the friendship. Thank you. Thank you for always being available to us. I love you all. Love you so much. Miss Patty Plymire, thank you very, very much for joining us on your day off. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends. Give us a rating and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hair Distry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.